Welcome to Politics and Right. My name is Egberto Willis here at KPFT 90.1 FM Houston. Hey folks, we are going to have a great show for you today. Hola, Billy Vickers. Welcome to Politics and Right. Bridge FCP. Welcome to Politics Done Right. Folks, don't forget this is a call-in show as well. Give us a call at 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. We have a great program in store for you today. Title of the show, These Exemplary Women Wins Prove Grassroots Can Beat Money if there is democracy. I repeat, these exemplary women's wins prove grassroots can beat money if there is democracy. The third largest county in the country and the second largest city in the country will be run by two women outspent four to one and 11 to one respectively. Lina Hidalgo, the judge, the county judge in Houston, Texas, won a well and hard fought war against a plutocracy. Developers and all gave millions of dollars to her opponent for a county judge race, and she prevailed. And in LA, Karen Bass, she won the mayorship of the second largest city. In the country, again, grassroots prevailed. She wasn't outspent four to one. You know, Howard, she was outspent 11 to one. Holy cow. Yes. And you know what, Howard? What's that? She won. Grassroots work. It does. It absolutely does. We have to be there, Howard. We have to be there, Tari. We have to be there in the house, in the streets, and everywhere if we are to win. But today's program, I want to start with something special. Lina Hidalgo won here in Harris County, Texas. And there were lies and misinformation and all of this all over TV, radio, etc. But it's where the lies and misinformation was coming from that's of concern, right? So when she won, she gave a speech. And she said she won't back down. She won't hide. Bring it on. And she also reminded folks that the Mr. Benevolent Mattress Mac here in Texas, in Harris County, that seemed to have given so much away to so many, came out and allowed the right wing to use him, to use his presence, to use the goodwill the community has had for him. To go against this woman with misinformation and lies. You know, I wondered about that, Egberto. What is Mattress Mac doing in the politics business? Thank you. He has no, he, he doesn't need to be there. But you know what it did, Howard? It Damaged made me, his reputation. Exactly, because it says that when he opened his store for all those poor people in his community to be in his store. I mean, I had a lot of goodwill for Mattress Mac. I really admired Mattress Mac. I thought he was always flamboyant. In other words, he was always there saying, look at what I'm doing for poor people. But he did. You know what I mean? Well, I always thought he was annoying and he used to get on my last nerve. (laughs) But he did a lot of good for the community. Yes, yes. And, you know, you always wonder what people's intent when they're doing, whether it's on a for-profit basis. Let me give a good example. Mattress Max gave, uh, told people, I think it was, uh, you spend $3,000 in my store, and if the Astros win, I give it all back to you, right? And it looks like something that he's doing good for community, right? But at the same time, Mattress Mac went ahead, and he took out an insurance policy that the Houston Astros had a good likelihood of winning. The insurance policy paid him $75 million. He didn't give out $75 million to the, to the people. So what I'm saying, I'm not, what I'm trying to say here is be careful about just pure goodness. I'm I'm, I'm, going to make you blush. I'm going to make you blush. Pure goodness is working at a volunteer radio station for much less than you could get anywhere because you believe in community and not saying anything about it and not telling folks, guess what? I'm working for free out here and That is true 
given. That's what you do. That's what folks do. Good folks that want to get things done, that's what they do, brother. And what, Tory called me up here on the freeway. He's not getting paid to be out here answering phones. All right? He's not here paid to answer phones. And he calls, Egberto, I am running late. There's a car wreck. It's a nasty day in Houston, Texas. It's a rainy day in Houston, Texas. But Tori is here. You are here. And we sit down and we say, that is the goodness of your heart to do something for community. And again, like I said, I watch Mattress Max tell everybody how much he's given to all these poor people. I watch him do that and I'm saying, well, at least he's doing good. Even if he's doing it in a, ma a manner to get a pat on his back, he's doing good. But what irks me this time here, Brother Howard, is the following. Lena Hidalgo, as the, commission, as the county judge, she instituted a lot of programs, right, to help the underserved in Houston, Texas, who has been underserved for so very long, even as we are a rich county. But she made sure that some of the spoils finally went to places to help those who don't have a voice. And for that, uh, oh, she's not doing good by the developers. She's not doing good by all the people who want to serve Harris County to make a profit. So here comes Mattress Max, the evangelical extremists, uh, the rich billionaires, and all of these guys that don't live in Harris County throwing money into, into the fold. Thank you for that word. Uh, Tori brought to word. Altruism is what folks here at KPFT show. Altruism. Altruism. I, I know, wait a minute. Uh, I, I see that and I read about that, um, but I won't put that on air, uh, Tori. And the reason why is because I don't have to go through somebody's weaknesses to show that they're great or not great. Right? But that is true what you've said. I'm not going to say what Tory said, but you know, the way if, if I were a Republican politician, I would have used what Tory just wrote on the screen, and that would have, a lot of people would not have known that. I just learned that, by the way, Tory, today. I just learned that today. Anyhow, so the title of the show today is These Exemplary Women's Wins Prove Grassroots Can Beat Money. The subtitle The third largest county and the second largest city will be run by two women outspent 4 to 1 and 11 to 1, respectively. Lena Hidalgo and Karen Bass prove an engaged democratic grassroots can beat the rich and the oligarchy. All right. Yesterday, a full page ad appeared in the Houston Chronicle that I found bewildering. As usual, a usual affable millionaire feud furniture salesman, a.k.a. Mattress Mac, who promotes his brand by doing very visible philanthropic deeds in the community, came out hard in support of an unqualified MAGA Republican candidate to unseat a young Latina woman, Lina Hidalgo. Okay? I assumed Mattress Mac's benevolence came with two purposes, brand awareness, and again, businessmen always keep that in mind, brand awareness, but also a touch of benevolence. After watching his support for the unqualified MAGA Republican candidate Alexandria Miller and being a part of the misinformation campaign bordering on lies, it was clear my assessment was wrong, and my fondness for him was misplaced. He became just another rich political hack buying a politician to control. And that is exactly what he attempted to do. Buy a politician that the extremist Christians, that the developers could take advantage of. The Houston and national oligarchs who supported the losers are not happy. They lost throughout the country. But most knew that it was smart to be quiet, to eat their losses. Any smart, any smart businessman trying to buy politicians, after he loses, 
he knows he better keeps it, keep his butt quiet. And why do you want to keep quiet? Because you don't want the pitchforks realizing what your intent was. You want to say something, Howard. Or is the embarrassment that you don't want? Exactly. Embarrassment and failure. Exactly. Exactly, sir. Exactly. So, but most knew that it was smart to be quiet, to eat their losses. After all, they were trying to buy politicians like they purchased slaves in the past. But not all were quiet. Mattress Mac must have been upset that the young woman, Lena Hidalgo, called him out. How dare she? An ad paid for by Gallery Furniture. You know, I'm not slandering anybody here. This is, they put it in the public domain, Howard. I am very careful how I deal with both per people on a personal level People in their businesses, meaning you don't want to do something on, uh, untoward to affect somebody's business that doesn't deserve it. But, but, Howard, not all were quiet. Mattress Mac must have been upset that the young woman, Lina Hidalgo, called him out. How dare she? An ad paid for gallery furniture, Jim McAvain's, a.k.a. Mattress Mac store, took out a full-page ad where they attacked her and demanded an apology. What? Good luck on that one. Yeah, but what I'm saying, the, the nerve to say, these guys went on TV, Howard. They spent millions on TV lying about her, her record. Lying about her record. Claiming that she was responsible for the crime wave in Houston. First of all, there was no crime wave. If you look at the numbers, there were no crime wave in Houston. But let's, let's go ahead and say there was a crime wave, just for the sake of, of, of argument. All right? Uh, hey, uh, Terry, when you're writing stuff for me to see, put a carriage return so that it doesn't scroll across so I can read the whole thing. I want to get your intellect on air, brother. Um, anyhow, uh, as it turns out, as it turns out, these guys try to make believe that the crime wave in Houston or the, the crime that we saw in Houston was somehow her fault. The same people that Mattress Mac is supporting, the particular Republicans that you have out there in Austin, here in Houston, they are the ones supporting policies that get you killed. They're the ones that unloaded the guns in Houston. They're the ones that ensured that all those people in Houston who wanted to have a gun, Howard, could get a gun. No questions asked. And you wonder why someone in a parking lot looking through his car and somebody is stealing and, and when you approach him, he has an easy gun to pop a cap in somebody? Go to Austin. The Republicans that you guys re-elected are the ones that are killing you. They're throwing guns in the streets. They're throwing you into the, uh, they're not throwing you into the hospital. They're preventing you from going to the hospital. They are the ones that are hurting you. They are the ones that are harming you. But you know, we are just little KPFT. We're just a little station with a 100,000 watt transmitter that's trying to get the message out, that's trying to tell you the truth. They have the Houston Chronicle who can create a story or give the slant to a story that makes evil plausible. Okay? They are the ones out there. So, uh, Mattress Mac Store took out a full-page ad where they attacked her and demanded an apology. Really? Will they apologize for distorting her record? And now, before I go to, to uh, read the ad that they put out there, because I want to refute the ad that they put out there. I know a lot of Americans, or a lot of Houstonians and otherwise know better, but I, I want to read some of the things that we have here on our chat because our chat is, is humping, Howard. Our chat is humping. I bet they're cooking, man. They're cooking, and this is all over the country. This isn't just here in Houston. Um, we have Bridge MCP says, Egberto Willis, New York, has its first female governor elected. Wanted me to point that out given that I said two great women also were elected in the largest city, second largest city and the third largest county. Eric Hayes, a supporter of Mattress Mac, says Mattress Mac is a pillar of community and you guys are bashing him are just disgusting. You know something? For you, Eric, my brother, I love you. But for you, having a rich man have money is good enough to buy dignity. 
Money doesn't buy dignity. You want to know some good, hard-working guys who are making a difference in community and who are helping community? I'm looking at two of them in my studio right now, Howard and Tory. Tory Mercer and Howard, okay? These guys are working here. They're not making a bunch of money. In fact, they're doing it pretty much damn for free. You want to talk about guys with dignity? Let's talk about the guy who made sure this studio got itself up and it's here 11 hours a day. All right? Brother Sandy Weidman. Okay? San well, I always get his name wrong. I'm not even going to try to get it right. But anyhow, I'd, money doesn't, doesn't equate to me to goodness. Jeff Bezos isn't a good guy because he's a billionaire. Jeff Bezos just laid off 10,000 people and to cover it gave away $100 million. Does that tell you something about how these guys can work with money? Eric Hayes again says, free doesn't pay the bills and Mac give millions in furniture and money. Look at the freaking rodeo to need. Look, all of it comes with a return. But if you want to, if you want to defend the guy, at least have your data together. He doesn't do any of this at a loss. That's an advertising expense. Bridge MCP says, never heard of Mattress Mac, though they meant Pillow Guy. Uh, again, you take a look at the Pillow Guy, uh, look at the Pillow Guy with a bit more class, and you got Mattress Mac. There you go. There you go, Bridge in New York. That'll kind of give you an idea. Lee Grant says, won't your time better be spent uplifting those who do good works rather than gaslighting for your narrow partisan political agenda? The reason why I am, uh, it's not gaslighting Lee Grant, and you know we are buddies, Lee Grant. Let me tell you why I must do this. I must do this because one of the problems the good guys are always have is we don't do what the bad guys do. The bad guys have no problem spending millions of dollars to to. To, to, to make somebody look bad. They spend millions of dollars just to malign. You want to say something, Howard? I saw your voice. Okay. They spend millions of dollars, millions of dollars to do harm. And the reason why things like liberal and progressive have a bad word is because they had no problem spending millions to malign it. Well, you know what Politics Done Right said? I am not taking a knife to a gunfight anymore. If the progressive politicians and the democratic politicians and all po independent politicians want to be quiet and be nice, so be it. I'm a nice guy. I try to be. But I am coming to a war with a bazooka. In other words, we will not allow these guys who are using their voices, their money, their, their money that they got from us to put us down. And that's the reason I do this, Brother Lee Graham. Uh, British MCP said, I think he is saying he admired the guy but then saw him support some rep and didn't get why or how he would do that. Bridge, one of the things I love about you is that you are able to see within. And that's exactly right. I admitted here on air that I was a great admirer of Mattress Mac. I always knew Mattress Mac was a Republican. Being a Republican does not stop me from admiring you. I have a lot of Republican relatives and friends. I'm a left-wing progressive guy. But I have a lot of friends of every type, every spectrum. But when those folks of any spectrum do evil, it is imperative that we call it out. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got here. All right, I want to read you guys part of the... Uh, read you guys part of the ad. For anybody who wants to call in on the subject, the number is 713-526-5738. I forgot to give the number earlier on. Maybe that's why folks aren't calling in on the subject. 713-526-5738. I'll try una vez más. Please give us a call. Tell me your thoughts. Do you think I'm wrong for hitting up Mattress Mac on what I think is something that he did that was utterly wrong? 713 Five two six five seven three eight. This is what the the open letter to Hidalgo, to Lina Hidalgo, was the art was the uh, ad that was out there, and this is what it said. This is what it said. Judge Hidalgo appears. Your supporters lauded your spiteful victory speech as they laughed at your gloating. Frankly, it alienated rather than united, and was on becoming of a person in a leadership role, yet not surprising. Really? Somebody just call. You can call back. I think we dropped it accidentally, so please give us a call back. Anyway, 
that first paragraph alone made absolutely no sense because the folks that were always on the attack during this election period has been the moneyed interests, uh, partially led by, uh, by uh, Mattress Mac, who did several ads with, with, uh, with Alexandra Miller to demise, or rather, to go ahead and malign Lina Hidalgo. All right, it continues. But then, your Biden-esque gaffe, notice how they're putting the Biden thing in there, your Biden-esque gaffe, the boss were immediately feedback. You crossed the line. In turn, your face expressed bewilderment. Appear you thought you, your wordplay was clever and expected a favorable reaction. Seems sour grapes on your part. It seems sour grape on your part. Okay, it seems like six. Okay, I, I just saw a red light. But I'll, I'll get you guys on air as soon as they put all the stuff that's necessary into the computer. All right. Appeared your thought, your wordplay was clever and expected a favorable reaction. Okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. Uh, seems sour grapes on your part for not winning any key local endorsements. And didn't law enforcement boo you recently in a commissioner's court too? Isn't that childish? Isn't that childish to say that the commissioner's Booed you? That's ridiculous. Let's go to David real quick. David, come on in. Hey, hey uh, Alberto. Yes. I got, a, I got an interesting little perspective to, to look at this thing. You know, Mattress Mac, he's such a philanthropist, and but and he, uh, I think he makes an appeal to religion, too, that he's a good yes. Christian. Yes. Well, you know, are you aware of the example that Jesus gave? I'm not sure. I think it's in. I'm not sure. Which oh, you. Of is. course, I am. A, I'm. I'm very which, much aware of it. Sure, Thank you. You can was, go ahead and say it. Yeah. Let me the story. I'll read the story to you. There was a rich Pharisee who walked into the synagogue. He had people with horns going before him. Just before he dropped his money into the alms plate, he had the people with the horns blew their horns, and everybody that was standing outside said they looked and they saw the rich Pharisee drop his money into the alms plate. And then there was a poor widow who had just a little mite, and she came along and dropped her money into the alms plate. And Jesus asked, asked the question, who gave more, this, the Pharisee or the widow? And he, made, he made, maintained that the widow gave more because she gave with no expectation of anything in return. And he said it to this effect. The Pharisee, indeed, he has his reward. And, but he said it like this. When you give, give in secret. Let not your right, right hand know what your left hand is doing. For well, when you give in secret, your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, Mattress Mac, he does everything for publicity. Exactly. Everybody knows about his giving. And he makes sure that everybody knows about it. So I have to say this. Screw you, Mac. You're a hypocrite. You know, David, uh, let me tell you something. You get the picture. Like I said, I, uh, that's why I, I said it into two parts. I said uh, he did it for Brandon, but secondly, I don't mind the benevolence that comes out of it. But when you get into politics and you malign and you prove that you are nothing more than a MAGA Republican, somebody that, that shows all those, those delineation, I'm sorry at that point. I can't be with you anymore. David, I thank you so kindly for calling. We have some more calls that I want to get to. But you keep listening, sharing, and let folks know about us. Okay, brother? Sure thing. Take care now. All right, let's go to Peggy Lopez, numero dos. Peggy Lopez, how are you doing, Peggy? Oh, Peggy, you're on. How are you doing, Peggy? I'm doing pretty good. How Talk are you doing? Talk to me, doing? my dear beautiful lady. I have, I have my phone company that I use, my cell company, uh -huh. because it's just another corporation. Right. However, what they do is once a month, they allow me to select who they're going to give their tax benefit donation to. Right. And it's all left-wing uh, businesses or organizations. And so I pay a little more for my phone, but I feel like I'm... And they get a tax benefit, but the people that I want to get the benefit of their tax loss get the benefit of their tax loss. And when right. I... Anytime I hear that a corporation is being benevolent and giving away all this money, the one thing I know is that that amount of money is how much they're not paying right. in taxes. And they're getting to pick and choose who gets advanced and who doesn't. And I'm absolutely against that 
in any form. Well, let me tell you, Peggy, first of all, I want to thank you for you. You've always been a politics done right supporter as well. So you, you, make, you make your extra dollar speak fund, I mean, speak completely for you. And, and what you're doing is so, so important. So thank you for that thought. Thank you for doing that because it's folks, folks like you that's going to allow us to te give the message. We can't blame all the folks out there for just not knowing. We can't blame right. them, but we can, be yep. a, we can be a part of that education process for those who are willing to change their minds after proving that what you're saying is actually fact-based and right. I appreciate you calling in, my dear friend. Well, thank you. And, I, you know, I've been at this for 60-plus years now, mm -hmm. and I really am seeing benefit of the education that people that think like me right. have been doing to people that don't think like me. <laughs> it is so important, uh, Peggy. Thank you so kindly. And you have a wonderful rest of the day. And I hope to see you at 3, okay? I will try to get there. All right, take Bye care now. Bye. All right, let's go to David. David, come on in. David, you're on. All right, let's try one more time. David, are you there? I this hear. is Mark. Oh, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. Talk yeah. to me. Oh, hey, uh, I just want to say I agree with you on your, your position with, with Mattress Mac. It really surprised me. When he when he came out like that, uh, you know, really sounded like a uh, to me a sore loser, and I right. never had him. I never had him really pictured like that. I've always admired the man for his his work in the community, and uh, uh, just never, you know, I knew he had, he was part of uh, the uh, the folks that were funding her opponent, right? But uh, you know, didn't uh, didn't really expect to see this kind of. Uh, Sad sack, spoiled, you know, uh, uh, reaction to him. I, you know, it's it's more like a, you know, an election denier, you know, sound. And that is what was uh, so scary, Mark. I mean, I'm glad you said that because, first of all, I want to make it clear that he didn't sign this letter uh, as if he wrote it. It seems like somebody on his staff wrote it, and then then his his store posted it and you know uh paid for right the right it's just out of it sounds out of character so. yeah I, but but the thing that got me is i i saw i saw some interviews that mac did and first of all mac looks like um you know wait and i don't i really don't want this to sound like ageism or anything like this but to some some may take it that way but i i watched him and i listened to the way he was talking recently and how he was coming to conclusions that he was was stating right and it was like, oh, my God, Mac looked like his, his mind is not all there. You know, it yeah. looks like it's not all there. And when I say not all there, I'm not talking about I'm talking about having been convinced by the MAGA crowd. That's that's the kind exactly. of stuff that I, yeah. that I met. Yeah. Right. And it is right. so unbecoming because that is the crowd. That those are the folks that despise the people that he always claimed to support. Right. And and, right. and it was so just like you said, Mark. It was it, to me it was out of character. I knew him always as a Republican, and I have no right. problem with Republicans. Uh, right? No problem. I'm I'm you know I'm right with you because I you know I have always voted Democratic. Yeah. No, he's a Republican. Don't have a problem with it. You know because he's just an upright and righteous guy. Yeah. Uh, and this just you know this this to me I, I said to my wife I said man this comes out of left field I just don't know where. Where this is coming from? Right, and this is going unless to... he's unless he's getting pressure from uh, yeah. the West Texas PAC that that, that funded all that. I the, don't the other millions of dollars. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but I tell you what, this has damaged him with more than fifty percent of the Harris County population. I guarantee. I, you that. know, I, I would think so. I mean, I have never. I'm not a big spender on furniture, but I, I've been to a store back before they they had different sales policies, right. and it was like a. It was like a car dealership when you walked in, right. all the all the guys coming up to you. But uh, I know it's different now. But I, you know, I hate to do the woke deal, but uh, I would uh, I would go somewhere else right now until he uh, chills out a little bit and maybe comes back to, to reality. To the other fifty, yeah, the other fifty percent, because well, he's going to see it. Yeah, you know, but the funny thing about it is, he says in this letter saying. Somebody should apologize to him. I'm sorry. That is the height no. of privilege. If anybody no. who needs to apologize, my brother, 
It's him. Right. He should say, I should have never got into politics. I should have never went ahead and lied about a candidate or gave misinformation about a candidate. Right. I shouldn't have done that because that candidate also is supported by many of my customers. How you could know, he it, not see that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think he was a little bit peeved. You know, he signed, or if, if he, I don't know who, he's, who signed it, but it's, Matt, you know, it's Jim McInvale, uh owner. Yeah. And, and, you know, the deal with her calling him a, a, a sales, a furniture salesman. Right. <laughs> I don't know if that rubbed him the wrong way. Or but the funny thing is, that's what he is. You know, a lot of people yeah. get mad when you say the truth. I look at guys like Bezos and all of that, and people want to worship these guys. I look at these guys right. for what they are. They, are. they are the users of other people's intellect, and they've profited off of other people's intellect. I don't look at these guys as great guys. I, when I, you know, I don't know if people can understand, Mark, how honest I am when I say the people that I respect are not the billionaires. In fact, I see a billionaire left and right. You know, it's funny. When I go to my conferences and I see those top wheelers, those are not the ones that I want to talk to. I want to talk right. to the people that are actually making a difference in society. I just met one guy here at the studio who was telling me about freezing food in his, in, in, in his freezer, and then he goes give it out after he makes 20, 30 meals or whatever, and then he goes give it out. And I'm like... If you want something that we should be highlighting, it's folks doing yeah, there, stuff there. like that. There it is. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Not, not somebody who yeah. has uh, $100 billion and say, oops, I'm going to look good today. I'm going to give you $100 million. It's a lot of money for you and me. But yeah. as far as he's concerned, just like the story that, that uh, David just gave us from the Bible, and I'm not a Christian, I'm a humanist, but that's a very true story about Jesus saying, what meant the most to me was that poor widow who came in here and dropped that the best of what she could in the basket, but the right. millionaire that's, who comes yeah. in and gives a few bucks, what yeah. the heck, right? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Brother Mark, let me get to Mike. I want to uh, thank you so kindly for calling, unless you have something else to say. No, that's it. Keep up the good work, sir. Well, thank you, brother. You have a good one. Mike, come on in. Mike, come on in. Hey, how you guys doing today? I am doing fine. Talk to me, Mike. Hey, listen, people need to know, uh, Mattress Max looks like an old, uh, a kind old do-gooder. Yeah. People don't know, in the 80s, he and his brother, uh, those furniture trucks from Mexico brought lots of dope. He and his, Mattress Mac and his brother, they made a gazillion dollars in dope. Let me stop right there. Okay. Let me, let me, Mike, 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 Mike. Let, let me, let me, let me, I, I, I want to stop right there. I, I heard those stories and I, you know, whether I believe it or not, I'm not going to put it on air. But let me just say what I want to say here. Because uh, tell me everything except about, uh, that you feel about Mike except the drug part. And the reason I'm saying that is. I, I, think, he, I think he's a hardcore Republican prick that's drank the Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. I think he has really no respect for the people that spend money with him, mm -hmm. okay? You're because so right Democrats about that, spend sir. Money, Democrats spend money with him. I've known a couple of guys that work for him. He's not, he's not, uh, he's barely uh, fair to his uh, employees, mm -hmm. you know. I know a guy who recently quit because he was promised to raise over and over again, had been with Max about 15 years. Uh -huh. I mean, so he comes on, everybody puts their best foot forward in public. Right. I understand that. But when, when, if you're a person in a business, and my employees were number one, okay, workers get no respect, and he's one of those people, owns a big company, got a gazillion dollars, and he is chintzy when it comes to just sharing crumbs of his profits with right. his people. There's right. no profit sharing, barely any benefits. He's a typical corporate mogul mooch. Really, you know he something is hell, and his furniture is lousy. Mike. His furniture is not so tasteful. <laughs> Mike, this let me tell true. you, I, I got you. I've Mike, been but... to his store. His furniture is not that great at all. I, I would buy a stick of furniture out of his store because it's just not nice furniture. It's I just got new you. furniture. Let me let me just say one thing, Mike, because what you've said, you've said a lot of stuff here, and what is so important. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 Mike, didn't no ask for Mike, this today. Mike, Mike, Mike. No, this is your show, brother. This is your show. And I, I just want you to let, let you know that. But the most, okay, you spoke about drugs. You spoke about how we treat 
folks. You spoke, spoke about all the people that shop with him, who they are, and you also spoke about, uh, then, then you spoke about the uh, furniture quality, right? Let me tell you, the most powerful thing, which is so important for our people to hear, because that you just made, how he treats his employees, how he treats the shoppers who are, are invested in him and not having the respect for them to stay out of something like uh, by pushing the Magalan propaganda. I mean, all of that is so yes. much more powerful than, than, than you know, the drug That's stuff, true. I don't know, I don't care. And the other stuff. Well, about he never his... got indicted. He never got right. arrested for any of it. But exactly. people who know, they actually know. Yeah. I want to make then... one quick point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'll take the rest off the air. Yes, sir. Okay. People need to understand that almost every business that you spend money with, from the gas station to the grocery store to the bakery shop to the cosmetics to hair and nails, almost all businesses support the Republican Party, which are anti worker, anti raising the minimum wage, anti equality anti-equal rights, women's rights, gay rights, anti, if when you, they have, they have circled the wagons on our whole society and all, everywhere you spend money, almost, they rep- support the Republicans who are being manipulated by the millionaires and billionaires. So I say to everybody, spend, as, <clears throat> spend the least amount of money you possibly can. Thanksgiving is actually a celebration of the massacre Every time they massacred an Indian village, okay, they celebrate it with a Thanksgiving feast. The turkey represents their bodies, the men, women, and children, and the cranberry sauce represents their blood. So everybody just deal with it. Hey, you know, look at the beginning of things Mike, before you start celebrating, you know, something so horrible. Yes, sir. Well, Mike, we celebrate Friendsgiving. I mean, we've always, uh, I mean, it, I still call it Thanksgiving, but I celebrate Friendsgiving because, I mean, I, I, like, the, I, I like real history. Uh, we, the, one of the reasons that, uh, and I'm, I'm deviating a bit because you opened the door, one of the reasons that, uh, <laughs> that, that we don't celebrate, that, that folks are so scared of critical race theory or critical thinking is because all Americans, when, start, when they start thinking critically, okay, when they start thinking critically, they ask a lot of questions. There is an article that was put out by um, that I that I read yesterday. I, I want to I want to get. I don't have his name right now. He he's a he's a he's a good Republican who t- con- decided that to save the country he had to become a Democrat. Oh, it's my friend. I interviewed him one time. I can't remember his name right now, but I'm going to talk about it on Wednesday. He wrote a hell of an article talking about who we really are as Americans. And it's not like uh, we need to be ashamed of who we are as Americans, as the right would try to tell you progressives are trying to do. It's about acknowledging who we are, how we got here, and also atoning for the things that we've done. And, and again, this, this applies to every country on the planet. As a society, we're trying to make ourselves better people. And making better people yep. means first acknowledging the wrongs that you've done. And we've all done wrongs, right? Well, no one's perfect, no one's an angel saint, but we have a constitution, and the last six words of the constitution says to form a more perfect union, and people like Mattress Mac could care less about that. Amen. People like him support everything that regular people, he's the party that he supports. He didn't want Hidalgo to come back in because he didn't want the freeway to be expanded, so his business won't be affected. Right. Okay, over there on 45. Okay, he's not going to be here forever. And they're all about the money. I understand that. I don't begrudge the wealthy because I wish I was rich. But the point is, one of the questions in the scripture says, do you want for good or you want for evil? Okay, so in my opinion, the guy on the phone previously said he's okay with the Republicans. I think the Republicans want for evil because they don't want equality let, for let, all wait, let me, let me, I want to correct that because, like, like I said, I have a lot of Republican relatives, families, and you probably do as well. All right? I, I find most, most people, all people, and I, I tell you what, I, I have a lot more to read on, my, on the blog that I did for today that, that's, going to answer <laughs> that, that's going to answer that question because I believe in all of us, meaning Republicans. Republican voters have no yes. idea. They have no idea how much they've been screwed over right. since the early 80s. If people just read Tom Hartman, right. the Tom Hartman newsletter, which is free, he lays it out, names, times, hey, places, you need to tell, wait, 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 wait. Made. Uh, I love Tom Hartman. I subscribe to Tom Hartman's newsletter. But you guys need to subscribe to my newsletter to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. 
I have a lot of that stuff in my newsletter, including the one that I'm reading today. So folks, go to politicsunright.com slash newsletter like you, like you subscribe to Tom's as well because we have a lot of material to tell you. And Mike, I got to let well, you go, but I want to tell you uh, it was an honor for you calling in. Please tell folks about us. And I've keep been listening in. to you a long time. been listening to KPT, KPFT probably since 1972. Mm-hmm. And the Republicans want to kill Social Security, want to kill Medicare. They want to kill everything that benefits regular people. They want to turn America into uh, Hitler's Germany or Putin's Russia. And the Republican voters have been so propagandized well, we're they don't it, even, they have no clue. Mike, we're going to keep people informed. Thank you so kindly for calling, brother, okay? Man, have a good week, my brother. You too, sir. Take care I'm, now. All right, folks, I want to finish reading. And by the way, the number is 713-526-5738 if you want to call in. 713-526-5738. I want to continue reading the, 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 the ad that they put out there, all right? Uh, our local icon, a.k.a. your furniture salesman is what... what uh, Lina Hidalgo referred to him as, built a humanitarian legacy rivaled by none. His goodwill and unwavering support for our communities won the hearts and minds of millions, including mine. Okay, I'm saying that now. I was won over by Mattress Mac. And so did Howard, he says. Yeah, like I said, the man used to get on my last nerve and still does, but he does a lot of good for the community. Yes. Or did. Yes. Until he self-destructed recently. Yes. Yes. Continuing. All of this well beyond your grasp, given your actions, approach, and lack of meaningful for the masses accomplishment. Now, that's a lie. I, 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 I got a list of all the things she accomplished, but it's too late in her show for me to go ahead and put it down, but I'll continue. It says, the, the scope and scale of Mattress Max impact is clearly beyond your reach. He lifts up others from all walks of life. Contrast this with your policy failures and virtue signaling since you've come into office. Your unbridled ambition for the spotlight and penchant for social justice and equi- equity take top priority. Check that out. This guy had the nerve to say because she wants equity and penchants for social justice, that somehow that is wrong. You see how they think? You see how they think, Howard? All right. While crime rises, infrastructure further crumbles. They don't tell you the reason infrastructure crumble is you rich fat cats don't want to pay the taxes to get better infrastructure. So the thing that you're accusing her of are the things that you don't want to pay for. Right? Okay. Uh, infrastructure further crumbles, homelessness increases. Again, you don't like social programs. So, of course, homelessness increases if you don't have the ability to get jobs because you guys won't pay a fair wage. Illegal immigrant population expands. No, don't get me started on the illegal immigrant population part because that is the biggest fallacy there is. Period. Punto y final. Then she con- he continues, the future portends the same, but on steroids, given the Democrat majority, and he doesn't even say the Democratic majority, he says the Democrat majority to ram through more. Harris County residents will needlessly suffer further as you ignore our collective needs to push your misguided socialism agenda catering to the ultra minority. In other words, if you want to help people, if you want to do right by people, you're socialist. Did you know that, Howard? Uh, I think they've. Uh, I think I've heard of that. Yes. It's funny. Colby, come on in. Colby, you're on. Hello. Yes, Colby, talk. Uh, hey. Uh, well, one, I think it's hilarious that um, he put collective needs and socialism in the same sentence. Can you believe that? Using, <laughs> yeah, he was not using collective needs to describe socialism. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, but I just wanted to uh, slightly change the subject, but keep it a little bit relevant. It's your um, show, brother. Talk. Go ahead and tell me. I, I, I think that, you know, yeah, yeah. Now, Mac has lately, uh, I guess, you know, shown his true colors, especially when it comes to politics. Right. And he, uh, you know, he was part of the Texas Youth Summit that happened about a month ago. I don't mm-hmm. know why a man at his age would be at a youth summit, but he was there. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he's been in ads and I think that maybe his big gamble on the world series might've emboldened him to right. feel, uh, like, okay, well now I don't mind losing some customers over something like this or, or, or maybe he's going almost like the whole, like Elon Musk, who right. richest man in the world buys Twitter and tanks it and it's just mismanaging it into ashes. And I'm wondering if, 
there's some kind of tipping point when it comes to what you're worth and what you have, where you, you just take all the filters off and you just, you become extreme. You know what? You just, you just hit the nail on the head, Colby. You know, when these guys have the state that takes care of them, in other words, Elon Musk with his space company, we are subsidizing him with our government contracts. We, the guy who doesn't like government subsidies for anybody else, we are subsidizing Elon Musk. We subsidize Elon Musk for the cars that he that he recovered from Tesla, right? So, I mean, you take a look at all these features, and I'm so glad you brought that up. When they're subsidized, they do well. Now, he jumped into Twitter thinking that he could take his it's, it's, it's bolster there, right? And what happens? The employee said, screw you, bye-bye, and now he is in trouble. So you, you, you nailed it. You nailed it. Elon Musk shows the incompetent that he is. He was born into money, right? He was able to get money with, you know, I mean, I, I, I read one, uh, one of my um, listeners, Eric Hayes, sent me a video with him. The guy couldn't really speak well, you know. Uh, he was given a speech at a university. And when he talked about, well, I went, I, I flew to London to give this idea or whatever I'm saying, that's the issue. He had the capital with which to work. If we had programs that gave people capital, we would have real people with real intellect to go ahead and do those things. He showed that he had no social skills when he went to Twitter. He showed that he doesn't understand business when he went to Twitter and that the only businesses that he had that is successful are those that we as people, we as human beings, as the American people, subsidized him. That's it. So you hit the nail on the head. The same thing is with, with Bezos and all these guys. They are the wards of the state. A lot of Bezos cloud management, guess who funds it? We the people. Nobody knows that. Oh, Bezos is rich. Not because he's deserving, but because others are there for him. Anything else, Colby? Oh, that's all. Just thank you for doing what you do. Thank you, brother. You have a great day now. All right, I'm almost done reading the ad, and I need to be almost done because I have the ending of this blog that I have to get to. But it says, the future portends the same, but on steroids, giving the Democratic majority to ram through more. Harris County residents will needlessly suffer further as you ignore our collective needs to push your misguided socialism agenda catering to the ultra minority. Thank you, sir. Mattress Mac wasn't on the ballot. What precludes you to issue an, a public apology to Mattress Mac? Really? Not a chance. Followed up by a face-to-face -face session or personal call. Answer your temperament. Again, the privilege of this guy, ordering the most powerful woman in Harris County, the county judge. This, this pipsqueak wants to now tell her, hey, Harris County judge, most powerful politician in Harris County, you better go to talk to that millionaire and make amends. Hell no. If, 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 Elena, if uh, uh, Lena Hidalgo were ever to do that, I would speak so much about her and make sure and block so much that it'll go all over the place to say, you don't bend to anybody. You don't, uh, you don't appease anybody. You won. The people elected you. Contrary to your snarkiness, he says, Mattress Mac placed the right bet. Alexandra Miller embodied outstanding character. How can she have outstanding character if she lied about the, of crime? The crime was committed by others. Leadership, accountability, and sacrifice evidence through her military service for America. I have so many relatives that served in the military. Not everybody that serves in the military are equal. Qualities that appear your supporters view as lacking importance. No, we don't lack importance. As for you, bring it on, bravado. Why are you lawyered up? Because she's facing a whole lot of crooks. That's why. Absolutely so. She should lawyer up. Okay, continuing now with the blog post. This, these are my words now. Those were, that, those were the words from his ads that I wanted to refute in real time. I continued. I could enumerate a list of what it meant to have Lena Hidalgo as county judge, but it would, have, it would make this newsletter much too long and change the focus. Suffice it to say, she does not take monies from the developers and other rich cats doing business with the country, with the county. She created programs to build up the youth and education, and she buttressed the county's healthcare system 
as she willed us through COVID with headwinds from an incompetent Texas governor, Greg Abbott. Kwame, come on in. Kwame, come on in, and then I'll finish the blog at the end. Good morning, my uh, illustrious intellectual peer. Uh, this is Baba Kwame Chakwe. And my, how are you doing this morning, brother? Good morning, my brother. How are you doing, sir? I'm better. This call is only, I repeat, only, Egberto, to compliment you, the production staff, and to commend you for your unusual intestinal fortitude from a psychological, metaphysical standpoint. Wow. I have learned so much from you, Egberto. I actually uh, look to you to enlighten me and also keep me um, abreast of the underpinnings of this so-called democratic system. I prefer to re really refer to it as a democratic. <laughs> Put another E in I it. Like that. <laughs> I call it democratic. But I want to thank you, and you have a loyal listener, and probably what's going to happen is I'm going to become a financial supporter, primarily because of you, Egberto. Um, Brother, I appreciate I it. To that touches yes, my There's heart. There's only one man. Yes, sir. I know it, that I will compare you to, and I don't, I don't bite my teeth about it. He's in Dallas, Texas. He's a, as a matter of fact, he is the Dallas County Commissioner, who I know you either know him personally yes. or you know of his I fame wrote and, about and, uh, him. and his legacy. John Wally Price. I wrote about him. Yes, sir. Look on my website. Well, yes. uh, if, I, if I compare you or anybody to him, let me tell you, brother, you and Tall Johnson Grass, love and peace to you. Continue commemorating Kwanzaa for the rest of this year and next year. Okay, my brother? Thank you, my brother. That, uh, you know, there's nothing. We don't know who's listening on the other side, right? We just have to hope yes, that sir. we are doing a good enough job. And I thank you so yes, kindly for those words. I can tell you that I'll be driving back to Kingwood with an uplifted spirit because of what you just said. Thank you so kindly, sir. You honor me. You honor me, my brother. Okay, I'll talk to you next time. All right, brother. Take care. All right, folks, let me thank you, Kwame. I love you, brother. Love you. All right, let me continue here with the ending of my blog because I only got four minutes, and it goes like this. What I found ref most refreshing about Lena Hidalgo's win and Karen Bass's win, that's the new mayor of L.A., win, is the living proof that grassroots action can still win elections. Many throw their hands up into the air because they see the rich getting richer and using the wealth to buy voters and politicians alike. But I have more faith in the voters. If we can get to them and plant the seed that encouraged them to rethink and to think critically, enough of them will vote for the right candidates to turn this country around. That this could happen in the third largest county in purported in a purported red state and the second largest city in a blue state is the power of what grassroots can do the basic tenet here is that we must engage everyone we must engage rural urban and exurban. We must engage those of every religion, ethnicity, and creed. We must seek people of all ideologies because there is one ideology we all believe in. Comfortable survival. Comfortable survival. That is the fear of our plutocracy, our oligarchy, our corporatocracy, and the ultra-rich. The reason they try to keep us fighting with lies and misinformation is that together we would bring the, er we would bring the earned equity they have legally stolen. Again, we would bring back, we would take back the earned equity they have legally stolen. In other words, they didn't do anything illegal. They just rigged the system. The book that I have called How to Make America Utopia, Take Away the, the System from Those Who Rigged It. That's why I wrote that one. It's a rigged system. Folks, if you want to read all of this, check out my newsletter at politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. And this blog is in there, or rather this newsletter is on the top of the list at politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter. How much time do I have left? Uh, two minutes. Okay. I only got two minutes to talk to you. Great. And then uh, when the music come in, I'll, I'll, I'll shut down. Uh, I'll start shutting down. That, that'll be my good old cue. But folks, let me tell you. I, a, a friend of mine in Kingwood uh, kind of uh, put this notice up about this. I hadn't read the, the, uh, the Houston Chronicle. 
And when she put that stuff out there, I kind of read the top and just said, oh, it's a typical stuff. Then I read the entire article. And I really got pissed. And then I said, this ties right into Karen Bass in, 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 uh, in L.A. And to all these, all these folks that are trying to do good. You know, being rich doesn't entitle you to be better than others. Being rich, in fact, many times, the ultra-rich, many of them are psychopaths. After you've reached a certain level of richness, how much more do you need? How much more do you need to deny others? How much more can you be against things like fair pay? How much more can you be against things like equal access to success? How much more can you be against giving people family leave? How much more can you be against giving people health care, basic health care? And most of the people who are against these policies are the ultra-rich who know that some of that money that they have gotten legally, le what I call legal theft, will have to be back. They will have to give back that which they've stolen. Legally, of course, but that which they've stolen. I will continue to be on this kick. I'll be continuing to try to convince Americans to critically think. Critically think. Critically think. This is your country. This is our country. We can make a difference. Yes, we have to vote, but we have to ensure that we're voting for the right people, those that share our values, not those that purport to share our values, but those that really, really share our values. I'm telling you, folks, we can do this. Lena Hidalgo, Karen Bass, with the grassroots, against all odds, against many times what they had money to spend, still did it. Why did they do it? Because you came through. And you can always come through. Money is never enough. We still have one person, one vote. We almost lose it this time. But we still have one person, one vote. And we should remember that. We must remember that. And when we remember that and assert our worth, let folks know that we know who we are, then we will really make a difference. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.